Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, every one of us wants to go to paradise. Jannatul Firdaus. We will go to paradise. I know I will go to paradise and so will you by the mercy of Allah, by His virtue and His grace. We try, but our deeds will never be good enough for us to earn paradise simply by the deeds. We have to have the mercy of Allah. However, many people say, well, you know, if I'm going to go into paradise and such and such a person's going to be there, it's really going to make life a struggle in paradise. What's the point of going there? So sometimes women say it about their husbands. Sometimes people say it about others. Sometimes men say it about their wives that, you know, well, if she's going to be there, I just don't want to be there. And sometimes they say, well, I don't mind Jannah, but I don't want him as my husband in Jannah. Well, that's very interesting because actually we're losing focus. That's what it is. We're, we're fighting about something that we definitely do not need to fight about because the aim is to get paradise, to get Jannah. Once you're there, the Almighty has promised you that you will have whatever you want. Now, that is something so complicated because what if I want you and you do not want me? The Almighty is going to have to deal with it in a unique way, something that I won't understand right now, but I do know that when we get there, He's going to manage it superbly. For example, if you're with your spouse and you, or you're with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, let's give the example of a spouse and you want your spouse to be tall with a certain type of hair, certain type of skin and so on. Uh, you will perceive them that way. And if they themselves wanted to be short with a different type of hair, they will at the same time be that way for themselves. And how Allah is going to manage that, I really don't know. But I do know. <laughs> In it, you will have everything, meaning in paradise, in Jannah, whatever the soul desires and whatever is tasty to the eyes, you will have it. Subhanallah. Whatever the soul desires will be belong to the soul. And whatever the eyes, whatever is delicious to the eyes, tasty to the eyes, you will have. So when we, Allah's promised us that you will have that, in fact, in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, and it's one of my favorite ahadith, I sit and I wonder about the greatness of Allah. He says, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ In it, meaning in Jannah, there will be that which no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard or heard of. And at the same time, it hasn't even crossed the heart or like we say, it hasn't crossed the minds of the people. That's what you're going to get. So when I get to paradise, after I get there, I will then decide what I want. It is too early from now to say, I don't want this and I don't want that. People who cry for their cats and animals and pets, mashallah, we're all quite close to our pets and we're also close to human beings, uh, some the, our loved ones, as we would say. Sometimes you desperately want to marry a person in this world and you say, well, if I can't marry you here, then I ask Allah to give you to me in Jannah. Okay, I know what you're trying to say, but when you get there, will you really think about it? It's like the example I gave of the womb of your mother. You were there at one stage enjoying some of that fluid that was there. And when you, when you came out, imagine if you were in that womb thinking, oh, I like this. I hope I get a bit of this wherever I'm going to go after this. When you came out into the world, if someone had to present to you that fluid and say, this is what you really liked, you're probably going to puke, subhanAllah. So I, I'm thinking that when Allah tells you that, you know, it's going to be amazing, nothing that you've seen in this world is going to be there. It's out of this world. It's like how if someone were to explain to you in the wombs of your mothers that you're going to come out into a world that is absolutely different from this womb, yet 
to you during the time of gestation, you had thought that this womb is everything. It's your world. Perhaps it's the end of the world when you were about to be born, not knowing that you're actually going into the unique, supreme, meaning the, the beautiful world out there that is totally different from the womb you were in. And it is a life of a different sort. So Allah tells us that the life of the hereafter is also amazing. It's different. You enter it through sakarat, the pangs of death. When you die, you're going to a beautiful, amazing place that is totally different from this world. And you're a believer. You will never be let down by Allah. His mercy is what we want. We say Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And we say in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most kind, the most compassionate. That's the one we believe in. We worship him alone. We purify our acts of worship all the time to ensure that we worship Allah alone and to ensure that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has preceded us in that act of worship. That's all I need to check. The minute that's done, I know I'm heading in the right direction. Allah will forgive me the shortcomings I've probably ha I, I have or something I've engaged in that was sinful. But when you say, I don't want my husband there, You'll be shocked when you go there. Firstly, he may be the best of the lot. Who knows? Or he might not make it there. <laughs> Allah forgive us. Or, you know, when you get there, at that point, there will be something that will occupy you to the degree that you will not even remember things of the world unless Allah wants you to remember those things. And where do I get that from? There is a narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, whoever drinks alcohol in this world, intoxicant, meaning the alcohol the, the, in this world, will not have it in the hereafter. Those who have authenticated that hadith, they say that how can you go into paradise at a certain point and you still won't have alcohol? Because Allah says you can have whatever you want. The simple answer to it is, you won't even think of it. It's not even going to be part of your thoughts. So you won't have it and you won't miss it either. You know, you won't have it and you won't miss it either. My son asked me a question a few days ago that if I make it to paradise and I remember someone who's in hellfire, what's going to happen? And I want them with me. What will happen? So I said, let's leave that to Allah. Because do you know what? Number one is you may not remember them. And number two is if you remember them, you may not want them to be with you because nothing is going to go against what Allah wants. So it's going to be unique and complete. Let's get there and see. The, the whole uh, point of this video is to let you know, my brother, my sister, let us focus on getting to the destination rather than arguing about what there will be at the destination. We get there and we are promised that you will never be let down. And Allah says, more than one place in the Quran when Allah promises certain things, whether it's, you know, punishment for the evil or whether it's goodness and so on. Allah says, who can there be more truthful than Allah? Number one. Number two is Allah is promising you a promise that you can hold him you know, responsible for, subhanAllah, I know it sounds quite big because that's Allah, but indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, you can ask me about my promise. When I promised you something, when you get to the hereafter, you can actually say, oh Allah, you promised me this, where is it? That's what it is. So when Allah says, we will give you whatever you wish and you want, people cry about their pets and I say, let's get there first and then we can talk to Allah. I mean, if really you, you remember something there, then Allah says, I'll give, I, I promised you, I give you whatever you want. And so if you don't want something, what about that? Then too, it, you won't have it. If I really don't want something, there's going to be nothing that's going to irritate me. Now, I didn't say that your spouse is not going to be with you, but I'm saying if at that point there in the hereafter, after you get into the place, then you decide you don't want something, then you're not going to have it. Let's get there. Now, the shaitan makes us, shaitan makes us lose the path by worrying about what's going to be at the destination. Please, my brothers and sisters, concentrate on the road. A few days ago, I had gone to the mountainous region of Zimbabwe in the east. Absolutely amazing, stunning area. And uh, I had a live session on Instagram where the phone was literally on a holder. I didn't touch it. 
And I was speaking to people and I saw some people commenting, Sheikh, you're not allowed to touch the phone and you shouldn't do this. And it's a bad example for the kids. And Trust me, I was concentrating on the road. We have too many potholes here. We have uh, distractions on the road. We have animals that can cross at any time. We have a lot that we need to be concerned about. We've got to keep looking to the sides, to the back and so on, the rear view mirrors. And so I was concentrating on the path because if I didn't, I probably wouldn't have made it. May Allah grant us ease. Same applies to us. When you're heading to Jannah, if you don't concentrate on the road, you're probably going to make an accident somewhere in the way. And who knows, you either delay your trip or you don't make it there. So may Allah grant us a beautiful understanding. Do you know what? Who knows? <laughs> It's amazing. I can't tell you this person's going to be with you or not going to be with you. I can tell you when you get to Allah, He will give you what you want at that point. It's too early to speak right now. So don't come to me and say, who will I be with? You know, if someone's had a wife or a husband, they've passed on, they had another one or something. Who are you going to be with? Trust me, Allah will grant you what you wish at the time. There are narrations that explain a few things, but let's put those aside for a moment and let me guarantee you, when you get to Jannah, you will never be let down. Impossible. There is nothing at that point that you want, that you will not have and that you don't want, that you will be forced to have. Remember that. You'll just be basking in your glories. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that day. May he grant us paradise. And inshallah, when we get there, we meet. And when we meet, subhanallah, we will be talking about the days we were preparing to meet in the hereafter. <laughs> inshallah, inshallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.